continued the last minute cheat sheet of a cloud big table. The next is the key points on big table instance management. You can configure one instance with up to four clusters or only one cluster without replication, one or more nodes per cluster. For cluster storage, usually SSD um, is, is mostly efficient and cost effective, but it provides better write throughput than HDD. Uh, HDD is for is for a lot of latency sensitive or infrequently accessed. If you need to convert from existing HDD cluster to SSD or vice versa, you can export the data from existing instance, then import the data into the new instance. Or you can use in the data flow or Hadoop map reduce job to copy the data from one instant to another. Now let's take a look at the big table's replication and the chains. Big table can synchronize data between clusters. You can have up to four replicated clusters. When you end or remove nodes or clusters to the big table, there is no downtime on the changes. But when you change the disk type, for example from HDD to SSD we just mentioned, you need to export the data from the existing instance to the new instance. If the app profile uses a single cluster routing to direct all requests to one cluster, then you must use your own judgment to decide when to start falling over to a different cluster. If the app profile uses a multi-cluster routing, Cloud Big Table handles the failovers automatically. There are two command line tools to interact with Bigtable, CBT tool and HBase shell. You can review the command reference for the details. After we talked about schema design, instance management, replication and changes, it should be easy to understand Bigtable's performance. Pay attention to causes of slower performance and the testing performance with Big Table on this page. Based on the causes of a slow performance, the following ways should improve the performance, such as choosing the right schema design patterns and row keys that I just mentioned in the previous section. Use replication, especially with a multi-cluster routing to improve read throughput, adding clusters or nodes to improve write throughput. Use SSD to provide a significantly better performance than HDD. You also need to memorize the guidelines of testing performance with big data before the exam such as you use a production instance. By the way, you can upgrade a development to a production instance at any time. Test with enough data. For example, if your production instance has one full load cluster and the tables in this instance contain a total of one terabyte of data, run your test using a table of at least 400 gigabytes. Stay below the recommended storage utilization per node, such as SSD clusters with 2.5 terabytes per node, HDD clusters with 8 terabytes per node. Before your test, run a heavy pre-test for several minutes. Run your test for at least 10 minutes. You should also be familiar with how to get a performance overview with the Cloud Console such as a monitor CPU utilization, storage utilization, latency, and read-write replication op operations.
I didn't have any questions on Cloud Big Tables IAM in my exam, but you can review this access control page, such as IAM management on project wide instance or table level, admin user view read rows, and the service versus user account, also the author scope. The last one you should study is the integration with the Cloud Big Table, especially integrate with the BigQuery, Dataflow, Dataproc, and the Cloud Functions. You can use BigQuery to query data stored in the Cloud Big Table. You can use Dataflow to process data that is stored in Cloud Big Table or to store the output of your Dataflow pipeline. You can run Hadoop jobs that read from and write to Cloud Big Table with Dataproc. Next two videos, I will go through the cheat sheet of Cloud Firestore and the NoSQL Data Service Decision Tree. Thanks for watching and as always subscribe to my channel for more great cloud computing learning tips. Thank you.